so a uh, quick video. <laughs> this video is going to be very short. I think everybody knows the answer to this. Uh, so somebody in the chat just asked, uh, does it matter if I use a GUI or should I master Git terminal commands? Um, I think the answer is pretty clearly yes on that. And, and the reason um, is because there's a lot of stuff that you can't do from the GUI. Uh, from any GUI. Uh, I, I have never seen, I don't look at many GUIs, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a GUI out there I don't know about. If there is, put it in the comments, let me know. But as far as I know, from the GUIs that I've looked at, and I believe me, I've looked at a lot of them over the last 10, 15 years because I've been trying really hard to simplify uh, introduction to Git for a beginner. And I'm talking about, you know, eight to 18 year olds through when I taught a skill stack. Uh, learning Git is one of the biggest hurdles to getting going with programming. And uh, in fact, I kind of have a layered approach to it. So um, say, for example, I have like a 12 year old and they don't want to teach them all the ins and outs of Git because my God, there are so many, right? And so what do we do? We would go and we would, I would just make them, you know, like a, a cheap command. I probably still have one somewhere. I used to make a command called save and I would put that on our multi-user server where all our people logged in and worked and everything. And and they would do save. They would just type save anytime they wanted to save. And it was just a git commit with a with a commit message that said save. Now they didn't know that you know they were these were all private repos, so no was going to judge them. But that's like really really bad pattern uh, of practice to do that um, and to get into the habit of that. But the reason for that was for the same reason people were asking about the GUI thing. It was so much easier. And um, I actually also installed VS Code for them. And for a long time, we used VS Code instead of Vim um, for one reason alone, really. Actually, two. One of them, three. <laughs> the one main reason was to get around Vim. That's what actually started it. Because I had people I didn't want to teach them Vim at all. So we would set up their keys and you know, they would just click on a button and you know VS Code would do the right thing and they could see whether they had updated or not and they knew how many changes they had and they could synchronize it. And it kept them you know, protected from all that crazy hassle of using the command line, forget, while they learned the command line. Because I mean, the idea always was that eventually they would learn the command line and, and be you know, power masters and you could do partials and hunks and all this stuff. I mean, I just made a, a video about using partials, using git, git add-p, which absolutely is I don't I've never seen a tool that does that there maybe there are but I mean it would have to be such a complex uh, graphical tool to be able to do the same thing that you can do very easily from the terminal so so that was the first reason I used VS Code and the second one was the colors because everybody likes color and it was just really easy to get themable colors for for people that are just starting out and that always pays in dividends of dopamine which keeps them coming back for more and then they they want to learn it so i i don't put down people who use graphic editors for that reason i think i think if if you're going to use it that's fine and i did i used it for a year because it was so much fun to have the pretty colors and all the crazy things you can get from it uh until they learned how to you know customize their terminal and get similar things uh, so that was the second reason and the third reason was was the whole collaborative coding thing i could actually be across the room and i could share a screen with them in fact i I used to meet with the the senior VS Code uh, team uh, weekly. Uh, um, one of my the proteges, one of the people that I mentored, and I had regular meetings probably for about two months with the Microsoft team uh, who was in charge of VS Code specifically about how to use VS Code for collaboration and education. And it was it was a thing. I mean, I could I could sit there, I could tell them exactly what to do. It was kind of like you could have Discord, it's interactive Discord session. And and while I'm not a fan of pair programming, and while I can do all of that same thing using Tmux, which is also what we used to do, um, I still found it, it was, was kind of nice. It's funny because it actually uses SSH and VS Code actually uses all the same technology that Tmux does under the hood pretty much uh, to be able to share and collaborate on the session. So, um, so for that reason, you know, I, I really went with VS Code for a long time. Um, and, and then I changed back and I, I actually had, I, I, did it, I did it for about three years. Uh, I mean, I started out using Vim and the command line and everything and all, all of those people that learned that that way went on to do crazy, amazing things. And the, it, honestly, you know, I don't have really objective evidence of this, but the people who learned VS Code in the middle uh, of that time, they did okay, uh, but they did not do nearly as okay as the people who learned the terminal. And then, then I went back to it uh, and Gabe and some people here might laugh at me, but I actually went back to, to Vim and Tmux and collaboration and SSH and, and keys and all that stuff. 
And that meant, you know, we had to add git commands to the command line. And I got around the problem of it being uh, an uphill battle. Uh, you can understand, I didn't even true, I still don't know git. I still don't think that I truly know git. But I, I in 2021, um, I think last year probably, uh, I spent quite a bit of time and I went through the git tutorial and I just want to mention this to you. The best way, hands down, this was recommended to me by somebody in the Twitch chat and I cannot thank them enough. I wish I could remember who it was. But there is no better way to learn Git than the Git tutorial itself. It is so stinking good. It's very well written. It's it's something you can have open in a Tmux window and switch back and forth while you're working through it. Uh, it contains content that other veterans don't even know. In fact, the switch command is really fully covered here, and there's still a lot of veterans who use Git who don't know about switch and don't use it properly. Um, and in fact, while I was doing it on the stream, they noticed that. They're like, oh my God, switch is cool. I want to use it. So this is like literally the manual. This is literally the Bible when it comes to learning Git. And you will sometimes not have a graphic interface to do your Git management, right? You might not be a release manager or you might not be one of these kind of people, but you definitely need to learn it. So not only do you need to learn Git, but in my opinion, you definitely need to learn how to use um, the GH tool, the GitHub command line tool. I can do things that with a graphic editor would have taken me 10 times as long. And if you watch me, I'm not going to show off right now, but if you watch me or anybody who uses GH all the time to set up releases, to, to edit comments, to, to view uh, existing PRs, to, to, to list all of this. In fact, there's things you can do with the GH tool that you cannot even do uh, from the interactive browser sessions with GitHub, such as list all of your, let me show you one, uh, GH uh, repos uh, skill stack. So this is going to list all of the repos of skill stack. I cannot do this from the web interface, period. It's impossible. It's impossible because Skillstack as an organization doesn't exist, but all of its repos do exist. And that's a separate video. But but the point is, the answer is yes, you absolutely should learn it. Um, maybe, you know, if it's if it's stopping you from coding and you're, you're annoyed by it, maybe you should, you know, use your graphic thing for a while. Uh, uh, eventually, uh, everyone should learn, must, I, I'm going to say must, uh, must, must learn the, the Git command line. I mean, you just, there's just, uh, there, there are just, uh, things you really cannot even do from even the best GUIs, uh, uh, GUI tool equivalents. Uh, and there's, there's also, um, hey, I'll tell you about, there's also the idea of, uh, that, uh, you know, it's always, um, uh, uh, plus, uh, learning, uh, the, command line uh, git properly uh, from man uh, git tutorial uh, uh, is literally the uh, not literally is you know the Bible uh, and and will remain uh, true forever <laughs> uh, on anything. Uh, GUI, GUIs uh, tend to come and go and change. So I think you should learn it. And I don't think that because because I'm an old guy with a beard. Eh? I do think you should learn the terminal. I think it will, it will definitely help you, uh, you know, make progress and, um, and, 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 you know, all those other things. Oh, I'm going to put here, by the way, uh, you really uh, should master GH as well. Uh, the GitHub command uh, line uh, utility, which is just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So that's the quick, that's the short answer for that. If you have any questions, please let me know or leave them in the comments and all that jazz. I don't read comments on YouTube very much, but maybe somebody else will. It could help them out. Thank you.